Howdy, Posh and Patty here, and I have a collective haul from, let's see, 70% off sale at Michael's, Walmart, Dollar Tree, and the Sunday Flea Market. Come on along. Well, first I'm going to do these 70% off sale from Michael's and I always look at these celebrated $9.99 trim bundles when I go into Michael's and I always say I'm not paying $10 for that even though I kind of coveted them because they're just so fun and the red white and blue was all on sale 70% off so you know 70% off ten dollars is seven dollars off so sure I'll buy this for three dollars why not but look at them they're sparkly eyelash rick rack look at these everyone is different and I'm going to be using these for some July <laughs> now that it's almost August journaling but I love 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 trims and ribbons so festive all oh, red white and blue so that'll be going in the journal for July journaling. And speaking of red, white, and blue, I also got the red, white, and blue sparkly stars. Now these are also expensive, $10. I'd never pay $10 for this, but 70% off, yes ma'am. And it is 25 feet, so you get quite a bit. 25 feet and one and a half inches wide. But I'm thinking red, white, and blue for July journaling. And the other thing that I bought at Michael's was this children's creatology kit. And I wanted it for this, um, this frame right here that looks like a flower. And you can put a picture in there. Not so much for those pom-poms and beads and things, but I'll probably use those too. But, but this is what I wanted right here. And I'll show you why in a few minutes. Because I'm doing a project that was inspired by Heather C. Crafters Alley by Heather C. She took these Dollar Tree shapes. This is part of my Dollar Tree haul. And made a journal out of them. And she said she was inspired by the December daily I made with the gingerbread house wooden shape that I decorated all up and made a journal out of. So now she's inspiring me to use these flowers to make a journal. I'm not sure what kind of journal I'm going to make yet, but what she did was wood burned a design on here. Oh my God, it looks so gorgeous. It looks so gorgeous and I've never wood burned before. So I went to Walmart because you know I had a coupon not a coupon but a gift card you know with your Medicare um, when you do your yearly checkup if you send in the information they send you a $50 Walmart gift card for having your regular annual checkup so I said hey why not and I went and I bought a wood burning tool I've never wood burned before but you know what when I bought these I thought that we had a wood burner and I asked Mr. Possum about it and he said, no, it had broken and he threw it out. So I'm like, okay. So I took my gift card and I bought a wood burner. So I have to practice. I have to get a piece of scrap wood to practice on before I do it because I've never wood burned before. But it has different tips on there. So I thought this was cool. And she put flowers on hers. I will link that video if I can find it. Probably can below. So while I was in Walmart, I picked up this E6000 because I don't have any. Somebody said it's very stinky, but it's good for when you're making um, three-dimensional things, I guess. And if I want to put this frame with a photo in it, in the center of this big flower I thought I would need a strong glue so I thought that'd be kind of cool so when I saw these I had to get it in 
I don't know if there's one in here or two. Doesn't matter. That's kind of thick. Makes one. Makes one. I thought it'd be kind of cool to put on the front of here. And even if it is thick, that's okay, because you know what? One of my journals has a diorama on it, and that's pretty thick, too. So I'll work on that, possibilities. And one more thing I got at the Walmart is... You think I'm crazy. Possum Patty, you're cray-cray. Fabric. Because I have a new idea for a journal, because I was watching. I know I'm all like monkey see, monkey do. Um, I'll save that for junk journaling. Um, 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 Linda's Creative Life. Yes. Do a Paris journal. She's inspired me to do a Paris journal. Look at this material. Oh, my God. This was in Walmart. I love it. I love it. I love it. It's so 60s, so Paris. So we actually went to Paris, Mr. Possum and I, and I have some photographs somewhere. And I'm going to make a Paris journal, and I'm going to put the photographs from Paris in there. I can't wait. And I love these colors, the kind of pink and lavender and purple. So that's what I got at Walmart. And I have some more stuff I got at the Dollar Tree. Um, this is for my summer journal. Some nice big stickers. My summer journal. I'm talking about my mermaid journal that I haven't made yet, okay? But I did finish my garden journal, so I might get to that. And I got a notebook. And this is the Crown Jewels, and it's um, just a notebook. I need this to take notes at my uh, keyboard lessons. He gives us music theory. I thought it'd be cool to put it all in a notebook. I've been using, like, loose sheets of paper all the time, and then I wind up stapling them together. But I thought, well, maybe if I just put it in the one notebook, then I won't have to worry about all that. And all the fall stuff was out, and I didn't have a lot of time this day. But um, I need to go back and look at the school supplies as a retired teacher. I love school supplies. That's, that's where I got this. Okay, any excuse, right? Now that I don't have to buy them, they're really fun to look at. And they had a lot of fall stuff out already. And I bought this Harvest Blessings. And this is one of those paintable, color your own decor from the Dollar Tree. And I thought maybe if I did a nice job painting this, it would be perfect for the uh, November Gratitude Journal, Harvest Blessings, right? So, November Gratitude Journal. I got stuff for Paris Journal. That'll be way in the future. I got stuff for my July journaling. And I got stuff to make another journal. So this is one, two, three. I bought stuff to make three new journals. Right? Three new journals. Well, I went over and got my hat. Because... We went to the flea market and I was looking for little things to put on my hat because Dolores said, <laughs> Dolores said I needed to make a steampunk hat. Already has some flowers, but, um, feathers, but I'm going to add some more feathers and I wanted to add some steampunky things around on the hat. Now I noticed looking at other people's steampunks hat, they all have this kind of like goggles thing in the front. And so at the flea market, the Sunday flea market, I was looking for an old pair of binoculars and I found one that's nice and rusty. So I'm going to ask Mr. Possum if he can take part of this apart and I can use this front piece here like this to put on the front of the hat. 
and then I might even I don't know if I can use any other part of it, but we'll see. But I want this part here, the lenses, to put on the front of the hat. And I can also use the, um, I think I was thinking about the hat too when I was buying the E6000 because that'll help. And I also found, i got to clean off the table now. I've dumped everything here. Some other things. The guy who was selling the old binoculars also had this gauge and so oh, that would be so cool on the hat so now I've got the two things for the front and I got a little gauge I could make kind of like a collage thing on the side put the gauge in the middle maybe some feathers and things and also some more junk I can't have steampunk hat without a clock on it Oh, this one's running. Was it running when I picked it up? Isn't that strange? So I'll take the band off and just put that on the hat. And then I picked up these earrings with the feathers and the chains because I thought the chains would be appropriate. And they can go somewhere on the hat too like that. Oh, and there's one more thing way down at the bottom here. Look at this. Can I get him in there? The little steampunk owl. Look at him. He's so cute. He's definitely going on that hat. He might go right in the front. Ooh, where's the front? He might go right in the front, right there in the front. So I got my little owl. I got my watch. So I have a clock face. I got these little medallions with the chains. I figured chains were perfect. And I got my binoculars to go on the front. And I got my gauge. So that's the beginning of the accessories for my steampunk hat. Those are all from the Sunday flea market. That was a couple of dollars for that. I think I paid four or five for the binoculars, but Mr. Possum said that was a good price. And I said, well, you know, we're taking it apart, but what are you going to do? I did find a few other things. Ha, ha, ha. A few other things at the flea market. And one, speaking of Dolores, look what I found. This was $2.00. And in it, Mary Engelbert, Brett's, I keep calling it Engelbert, Mary Engelbrett, Art of Paper Crafting, and it's, I don't know, it's like a kit. And there's a whole lot of paper in here. Oops, let me flip it around. A whole seasons, look at that. Holidays, patterns. Celebrations, letters, borders, frames. There's a lot in here. I don't know how much of this was actually used. Uh, it says it costs $18.99. $150 design sheets, 10 pages of stickers, 3 ribbons, 10 accent buttons. So I didn't count this paper, but... <laughs> I don't know if that's 150, but oh, cats in my lap. It's a lot of paper and really nice designs too. And there are stickers, like the box said. One, two, three corners, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. Oh, look at that one. Ooh. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. How many stickers did they say? It says ten pages of stickers, and there's fifteen pages of stickers, so I don't know about that. Okay. 
And there are some more goodies in there too. Um, a little bit of ribbon and rickrack, not a lot. And then some of the um, little die cuts, I guess they are, just a little. I love you. Like a birthday cake. And I love you. Just a bunch of different ones in here. Of course, she's famous for the cherries. Oh, and the sunflower. You see the sunflower? There we go. Oh, I think I saw a flag. Cherries. And so I'm not going to take them all out, but there's a whole bunch in there. So it was $2. Let me count those papers. My gosh, I counted them all, and all 150 sheets of paper are here. They're so adorable, and 150 sheets, $2, 150 sheets of paper. And what I say, there was like 15 things of stickers, and the die cuts, and the trim. Not a lot of trim, but a little bit. And those die cuts are really cute. And the cute box. The cute box to keep it all in. I can't get it back in right now. Okay, so cute box. And what I'm going to do, it says sturdy and reusable box. So almost the whole set is here. And this is gorgeous. Is clear that stuff off of the table because I save the very best for last. Vintage and antique, I think. Vintage and antique papers and cards. Be right back. I also picked up these vintage cards. These are all from the uh, late 1920s into the early and middle 1930s. And there are a lot of little welcome babies to the happy family, Valentine's anniversary, birthday, and things like telegraphs, uh, telegraphs, telegrams, Western Union, and letters. This is 1937. And, you know, I go in and I see these vintage cards and they always want like $2 a piece. And I'm like, oh, you know, what are you going to get for $2? I mean, they're beautiful, they're gorgeous, they're pristine. But I'd rather have something that is not pristine, something I don't feel bad about cutting up. And these were actually stuck to a piece of scrapbook paper. So when I pulled them off, they're definitely not pristine, but that's okay because that is just the back of the card. And I will cut that off and use the images like this little beautiful images, like the baby. I have an idea for these tiny images though. So stay tuned for that. So anyway, so there are what? There's like 23 pieces here, here, keyword, here on the desk. So how much did I pay for a lot of, I mean, not a lot of, like one, you know, when you get buy a bunch of things together, it's called a lot, okay, a lot of vintage cards. Yes, I did pay a lot for a lot of vintage cards. I paid $30, but wait, there's more. Well, first of all, let me tell you the story, then I'll, I'll share with you how many I got. Well, you'll see as I tell the story. Um, they came, like I said, on scrapbook pages, and they were glued front and back. And they smelled a little musty, so I spread them out on the sidewalk. And I lightly sprayed them with some Lysol, and I let them cook in the sun for a little while. Then I flipped them over, and I sprayed them again, and I let them sit there for a little while. And then when they got nice and hot, I started pulling the cards off of the paper, 
and that worked good. I really didn't want to put a heat gun to them because this paper is so old and fragile. I figured it would just like go up in smoke. So I sat out in the hot sun, 98 degrees. No, I kind of went in the shade a little bit, but I kept the, the papers in the sun and I pulled each one off front and back of all those sheets of paper. And let me tell you, there are 45 sheets of scrapbook paper with things glued on front and the back. Wow, that took a while. So after I was finished with that, I threw out all the scrapbook papers that were kind of musty and I brought the cards in the house and I spread them out on the floor. And as you can see, some have that gray paper on the back and those are from the 1960s. So I have two lots, one from the 1960s, mid 1960s, and one from the late 20s and early and into the 30s two lots of cards. Next step was to sort them out and count them up. I was just curious to see what I got for my money. So there's no way I can show you all these cards because there are about 440 pieces. Yes, 440 pieces, mostly cards, some telegrams, correspondence, calling cards, uh, two photos, a couple newspaper clippings, and what else? And some uh, notices. But let me just show you quickly. Okay, so these are cards from 1964, I believe these are from. And I have an idea for these little tiny images. Aren't these cute? Look at the little babies. So I have an idea for this. And basically, you know, some of them are a lot of fun with feathers. And then this one is flocked, and I have an idea for that. And see, I love these cards with the little images on them. Like this one. It's like this little kid in the dirt. I have ideas for those. So there are, and these are all welcome baby cards from the 1960s. Look at this one. is a diaper. I could put that in the journal and do something with that one. Love it. Love it. People don't even use diapers like this anymore, do they? So these are 1960s um, baby boy cards. And there are over 100 here. About 110 of these. Almost 110 baby boy cards. This is still the 1960s. And you know I love this one. With the fairies and the flowers, this is going to go into a journal right away. I have a feeling this one will not sit around. Look at this little image. I'm going to cut that right out and use that. I love that. And some of them are so fun. Look at this. And I love interactive. And look at this pony. It's precious. This is going to go into my howdy, probably. And look at the little house. You know, I like this. This one has a little door. The little pigs inside. I can alter this into something. And look at this one with the little hats. Birthday party, 1967. And look at the owl with the eyes. Look at that. Oop. Oop. You know, I'll be using that for something. And the little bunny with the sparkly tail. Anyway, so there are these are birthday cards baby birthday cards and there's about 40 of these and I do have my little sort of nature carnival journal that Calissa, Calissa made me Caramia Caramia's Corner and some of these like this images are going to fit perfect in that journal circus a lot of circus ones elephant seal with the ball so a lot of these will be going in, look at this giraffe. A lot of these will be going into that journal. And then these are some little tiny, tiny cards. And again, you know, I'm thinking ATCs and ICADs for these little images. Look at this. So precious. Fun, 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 fun. 
And these came off a card. But I thought it was cute. Oh, look at this. That's got to go in the Farmer's Journal, right? I'm looking in the Carnival Journal. And I just love this. It's got little sparkles on it, too. And you know this little boy with the bubble is going to go in a journal, right? These are Valentine's. There are, let's see, about a dozen Valentine cards. And again, some of these, oh, look, this will have to go in. Oh, look, it says Howdy. That's going to have to go into my Howdy journal, which I haven't made yet. And look, this would be really fun in the Circus Carnival journal with the train. Got the country, got the cowboys. So these will be, you know, just like some vintage images. Some cute little dog there. It's a big dog, actually. And then here's some um, telegrams and letters and notes and different things. Letter from the synagogue. So just some correspondence and then a whole pile of calling cards. But I like the little images on here. Look at the little baby. So I might be using those for something, a little bouquet of flowers. And then a whole bunch of calling cards. And I just noticed that one of them is from the Wanamakers. And I'm going to have to look this up. See if this is the Wanamakers who had the Wanamaker store. I think it was Philadelphia Wanamakers. Hmm. That might be a famous person's card right there. Okay, those are really nice. Vintage, 1964. I have some ideas for some of those things, but wait until you see the cards from the 1920s and 30s. Oh my gosh. Here are some Valentines. There's about two dozen Valentine cards. Watch. Look at that. Is not not adorable or what? That can go right in the journal. Beautiful. I'm going to have to make a Valentine's journal for next year, right? Look at the little kid on the fish. And this one is the same idea. Love these. So interactive. So fun. Look at this. To Mother on Valentine's Day. Beautiful fan. Gorgeous, gorgeous. And then look, how could I resist this one with the braids? I'm not that skinny. I was at one time, though, when I was like nine. Look at this beautiful 1920s Valentine card. And this guy, Jack, sent so many beautiful cards to his honey Lulu. <laughs> look at that image. Oh, my gosh. It's going to be so fun. Or oh, this might even go in Emma's journal. Ooh, I bet you Emma would like this in her journal. Look at this vintage. Are these vintage or are these now antique because they're so old? I think the 60s are vintage and these are probably like antique. This is gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Look at this Art Deco. Art Deco, I love it. I love it, I love it. And look at this one. I love you, dear, it says. You got the little ribbon on there. Isn't that gorgeous? To my Valentine. Anyway, I'm not going to go through all of those. I just want to show you some special ones. And then here's some, just a couple of the birthday cards. Look at that. So deco. And these, look at this. This is like material. And this can go into the slow stitch journal. Isn't that beautiful? I'm going to take that right out and put that, and it's even got batting behind it. Stitch that right into my journal, and then there's a beautiful image on that side. And look at this. This is like vellum. Look how it's aged and wrinkled. I love it. Look at how crinkly it is. And wouldn't these be gorgeous on a little journaling card? Beautiful. And here's another thing for my slow stitch. It's like embroidered silk. Take that right off of there and put that in my slow stitch. And another vellum. These are gorgeous. Look at these. 
I don't know if you're into old things, but I love Art Deco. I love the old illustrations. Look at this. This is beautiful. Oh, and this one. This is like a Tiffany. And look. It's like a tag already. Anyway, so these are all birthday cards. So there are um, about three dozen of these. And some of them are just downright gorgeous. Okay, these are more birthday cards, but these are like baby birthday cards. So vintage, so vintage. And these are like baby birthdays. There's about a dozen of these. But I love these first few that I'm showing you. Look at this. Look at that. They're precious, precious, precious. And these are um, welcome baby, welcome baby to the family. Look at this, uh, 1920s, the baby in the airplane with the silver on the wings. Look at the baby in the boat. And this one's gorgeous, Belle, and this one's a little beat up, but that's okay. We like vintage. You don't have to distress it. It's all brown already. But it's gorgeous. Look at this. I could cut these out and put them on something. These are just beautiful. Look at the baby and the flower. Anyway, these are gorgeous. There's a whole bunch of those. Okay, these are Father's Day. Isn't that cute? This is adorable. Look at this. And these are um, Get Well cards. Look at this. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. I can put that on a journal page. I love it. Anyway, these are all Get Well. So there are five Father's Day. And did I write down how many Get Well? Maybe I skipped the Get Well cards. Hmm. Look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it makes 450 pieces with the Get Well cards. Huh? So we just bumped that up to 450. And look at the Mother's Day cards. Look at this. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. 1920s. Oh, something else to put into the slow stitch book. A little pocketbook on there. Oh, and I had to show you this one. It ripped a little bit, but I think I can somehow piece part of this together. See what I can do to reconstruct that. Anyway, look at this. this is Gorgeous. I love these. I love them. I love them. All right, so there are two dozen Valentines. These are engagement, wedding, and anniversary cards. Look at these. These are gorgeous. Oh, and here's the two photos. These will either have to go into Emma, or maybe I'll put that one in Emma's and this one in Howard's. But this is the engagement photo. Or the wedding photo, one or the other, from 1928, I believe. Engagement, 1928. It's very delicate. I'm going to mod podge that down. Hotel Astor, Miami Beach, Florida. Look at the cars overlooking the ocean. Oh my gosh. This is postmarked 1940. 1940. That's the newest thing I've seen in the um, in this section here with the 1920s stuff. From the Hotel Astor. Engagement. Look at these cards. Look at this. These are gorgeous. Oh, I love these little scenes. So 1920s. So 1920s. Look at this.
Anyway, I'll look at this. Anyway, all right, so those are all engagement, anniversary, and wedding. And then I just have a pile of, like, calling cards. This one says Happy Hanukkah. Gift cards, calling cards. Some of them have nice little images on them. And there's another piece of a telegram, Western Union. Best wishes to you on your second anniversary. And that is it. That is it. That is it. So with the recount, we have 450 pieces for $30. Well, this is going to make a lot of ephemera for Howard and Emma. And if you don't know who Howard and Emma are, they are my two new journals that I started. So Howard is the steampunk. And I will be using a lot of those vintage images for Howard. And Emma is the shabby chic. And I'll be using a lot of those images for Emma. And then the fun cards from the 1960s are going to go into this very fun journal that Clarissa made. And you'll see that they're going to fit perfectly in here. Elephant, see, elephant going to fit in here gorgeous this was a Dollar Tree challenge so the colorful 1960 cards are going to go in here I'll make some ephemera for this journal well, I was just about to say thanks for coming along but I found a few more items that I got and I'm thinking of, well, another journal, right? But sort of like a vintage sewing journal that I see so many people make. And this is a vintage set of needles from the food fair, which was an old grocery store. I don't even think they have food fairs anymore. In really nice shape. This one is a calendar for 1933. This is really vintage. Isn't this nice? Look at this industrial bankers and there is um <laughs> quick action call them on the phone and look at the picture of the phone you see the little phone there quick action call them on the phone and there's needles inside and this is a needle threader it's broken but this would be really cool a timely reminder from your financial friend. Awesome, I love it. And the third one was a little rose. And you can see there are 10 rust, rust proof needles. Of course, some are missing and some look a little rusty, but I don't know when this is from, but I bet you it's pretty old. Oh, Stan home. Stan Home, Stan Home product. Is that just Stanley Home products? It is. Oh, this is a Stanley. I remember Stanley products. This is a Stanley Home product. I love it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through my junk and look for, I think I have a couple packages of vintage rickrack and things. And I'm going to start gathering these things up together in a baggie. And then when I find the appropriate, I don't know, papers and material or something, um, I'll make a journal. I don't know what I'll put in it, but we'll see. So now I'm going to say thanks for coming along today and sharing in my happy bargain hunting for junk journaling. Bye-bye.